Oke. Okay. Is my screen visible guys? I mean, can you hear me? Can you see me? So guys, can you hear me? Can you just give me a message if you can hear me? Can you hear me guys? Okay, thanks for joining. Rafi is saying he can hear me, anyone else? If two, three people confirm, I will be sure. Hi, Hakim. <clears throat> anyone else? Who all had joined? Just say hi. Hi, Mansu. Cool. Hi, Mayur. Can you all guys just press like once so that the recommendation will go to other people? Hi, <clears throat> Rohit. Hello, Himanshu. Okay, so without wasting any time, let's start and let others join. Okay. So let's go ahead with our first question of the day. I'm good, Rohit. How are you? I'm good. I hope all of you are doing good. So I will just go to the first question. A random variable X. Okay. So today we will be focusing on statistics and we will be focusing on what else? Um, Python, obviously and some statistics questions and some questions on recommendation systems okay so a random variable x is normal with mean thousand and standard deviation 50 calculate g score for this for 1200 what will be the z score guys you know formula for z score right Rohit is saying option D, that means four. How are you calculating, guys? Can you give me the formula? Okay. 
can someone write the formula four is the right answer can someone write the formula yes 1200 minus 1000 by 50 so in general x minus mu by sigma right so for any any given observation x bar if we can say x bar minus mu by sigma yeah okay let's move to the next one k means what is the difference between k means and k means plus plus it should be simple one you can tell me different algorithm altogether different in terms of centroid initialization different in terms of convergence or none so funny kiran and venkatesh is saying different in terms of centro centroid initialization rafi is saying different algorithm altogether and rohit is saying different in terms of converging multiple answers coming so people who are saying A, like Rafi, can you tell me how these are two different algorithms? Because k-means plus plus is basically an extension to k-means or a different working way to k-means, I believe. But Rafi is saying different algorithm altogether. Okay. So can you give me justification? And people who are saying C, different in terms of convergence, can you also give me justification of your answer? Because B is something which I agree with. Okay, Rafi got confused with KNN. So these two are not two different algorithms. Okay. Um, K means plus plus is just an extension of K means. So few things are just different. That's all. option c can you please explain classification and regression because i have exam tomorrow see classification tree and regression tree basically both will be one kind of decision tree only so it solves two different kind of problem right in classification you solve a, you solve a binary classification or multi-level classification kind of scenario and in regression it will be a regression that's the only difference there is not much difference Rafi is saying option C, option B and C. Option B is uh, perfectly fine. I mean, option B is something which I will also say. And option C is something which is obviously if the centroid initialization is different, then convergence will be faster. So option C also we can say. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Yes, correct. Rohit is saying in large data set, K means plus plus will be better. So recommender system, can you tell me the difference between, I mean, conceptual difference between collaborative and content based recommendation? Collaborative and content based, what is the difference? What is the difference between collaborative and content based? Content based means we recommend product based on likes and dislikes of a customer. Content based filtering usually makes recommendation based on users preference for products. Collaborating filtering mimics mimic user to user recommendation. So what is the difference, main difference? So content-based approach, collaborative approach will not take product features into account. That's what I believe, right? I think you will agree with me. Collaborative feature means only user and what user is using, right? Content-based means different properties of the item and the user also. 
collaborative can be your user based and item based whatever kind of collaborative we want to do user based or item based right that's fine okay so all in all collaborative filtering means take multiple people together multiple users together and see if i am liking something you recommend someone else also something based on if i am him i me and him are kind of similar content based means you take the content of the item into consideration content of the user also into consideration okay next one next one is check if a given string is palindrome you need to write a python function you call it or code snippet you call it or whatever you want to call it right so your function or code snippet should tell me if i give a palindrome that it is a palindrome for example a n a a double n a anna this word is a palindrome right you know what is palindrome from front and back it will be similar so can you give me a code snippet that will do this it will just tell me whether if a given string is palindrome or not palindrome this is again a interview question for many interviewers famous i mean favorite so i'm i'm asking you you can just start with a iteration zero of your code and then we can improve on that anybody who comes first anybody who gives the answer first reverse this string and compare with original one any answers guys i'm waiting is palindrome if s is equal to s answer is palindrome yes else no str input is equal to str input double colon minus 1 if input is equal to input double colon minus 1 same thing uh all of you are doing same thing some of you are writing a statement some of you are writing in function that's fine okay not a problem next one <coughs> you roll a unbiased coin three times okay how many times three times so i mean to say here dies actually not a coin okay what is the probability of getting i'm sorry i meant to say toss toss not roll okay toss you toss a unbiased coin three times what is the probability of getting two or more heads so you are tossing a coin three times okay first time head or tail can come second time head or tail can come third time head or tail can come so in how many ways you can get two or more heads d none okay why what is your event space and sample space size here event space and sample space size tell me seven by eight is i think little more to me seven by eight looks like him also is saying seven by eight <coughs>
1 minus probability of getting all tails. One minus one by two, one by two into one by two into one by two. Answer is D. So, do you agree? Answer is seven by eight. Himanshu is saying one minus one minus one by eight, which means seven by eight. Rohit is saying one by three. How? I'm saying two. Two or more heads, right? So my 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 event sample space is definitely I think nine, nine, right? H H H T T T H. Okay, two two to the power three, eight, I think eight. What is the event space here? So you have to leave the situations where you get, you know, two tails or three tails. See Himansu, you are doing one minus one by two into one by two into one by two. But I'm thinking, uh, what about two tail situation? You are not minusing that, right? Two tail situation, that also should be minused. So, uh, see, simply it will be event sample, uh, you know, your, your, your global space or sample space will be eight. Oh, okay, H H H T T D H T H T H T like that eight things. Out of that, in how many ways you can get get two or more heads? So H H H is one, H H T is one, T H H is one, and H T H something like that is one. So that way you can compute. Okay, I think it it should be one by two. I, I'm not computing. I'm just saying. Okay. Event space how much? Kalyani sample space eight. Event space how much? Is it four? Four. Then it's one by two, right? So it will be D none. Okay. You guys can compute. There is a possibility that in this discussion we may miss something. You can see once. Okay. Unbiased is nothing but, you know, fair coin, you can say. Normal coin, not a biased coin, fair coin. Let's go to a next one. Simple one. Out of these two models, which model is better? Silotis code less is good or more is good? That 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 is the simple fundamental behind this. Okay, many people are agreeing to one by two in previous example. That's that's fine. Okay, so K means which one is good? Everybody is saying A, which means. Silot score or silot score, whatever you pronounce it, uh, more is better. Okay, so closer to one is best. I think closer to minus one is poor. So in this case, A will be better model because that is more, right? What is the input data needed for market basket analysis? User data, item data, transaction data, or all? Oh, 
Okay. <clears throat> Have you worked on market basket analysis or a priority algorithm before? Anybody has worked on a priority algorithm or market basket analysis? Do you know what kind of data it takes as input? Rohit is saying pretty confidently that it is transaction data. Anyone else? What is your view on this, guys? market basket a priority algorithm i mean to say here a priority algorithm okay <clears throat> can you guys press a like button once please 20 people are there you can press like button once what will happen is it will go to others as recommendation if you do that okay then more people can join it will be more interesting so what is market basket market basket is basically an analysis where you analyze which product goes with which product okay for example um if i give you uh, 1000 transactions of let's say uh aditya birla more more superstore right so you see that in many baskets you will see bread and jam and butter and milk so this is a combination which is going in many baskets okay so this kind of analysis is called market basket analysis so how it is used is Tomorrow, uh, if somebody purchases bread with 80% confidence, you can recommend jam or butter or milk. Okay. So in this type of analysis, we mainly need transaction data. Okay. We mainly need basket data. Basket data means what are the items in the basket? Okay. So item one, item two, item three, item four, item five, other basket may have item two, item three, item 16 third basket may have item 4, item 8, item 10. In this way, we see which items goes together and there are concepts of support, confidence and lift here where we say that, you know, this item goes with this item with this confidence. And then we kind of recommend or kind of tell to people, hey, you know what, this goes with this. This is mainly applicable for retail and shopping and e-commerce kind of places and if you try to use it for other places it might not do very good that's what i have felt but this is a good algorithm to be used so here transaction data mainly okay until or unless you want to do something on user data no need of user data also only transaction data yes a priority and frequent patterns algorithm so you can get in r and python both the algorithm okay okay now in this python question i want you to write a function which takes any number of scores and sums it okay so how i will give score is i will give score in the form of a dictionary suppose there is a there is a cricket match going on and in 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 a in a, in a runny uh, sorry rainy weather that match is going on so only three players were able to play. So what is the total score? 60. If two players were able to play, what is the score? 30. Suppose eight players are able to play. So all those eight scores should be summed up. To, to your function, I will give a dictionary like this. Player one, score. Player two, score. Player three, score. And your function should be able to tell me the total score. Okay. Can you try this? So only one thing important here, I can have any number of players in my dictionary, that's all. No, I'm telling you to write a function that will accept this input and give me output. Your function should be capable of handling dictionary of any size.
dig dot value sum anyway you have to do but can you do it through a function Anybody? No answers. Are you trying or not trying so that I can move to the next one if this is something you don't want to try? Just let me know. You can just write, I am trying. Okay, sorry, I was not getting messages, it seems. Item list dot append, final sum, def dict return sum dict dot values return some k args dot values some i i think most of these are correct only different different ways of doing it okay so <clears throat> it is doable i mean yeah yeah I, I can see all the answers now message was not coming <clears throat> return some def function some num my dict this can be done this can be done easily and uh, inside a function we can take uh this and we can just loop it over and you know sum all these things that's perfectly doable only one challenge here is passing this as an argument right so that part you need to just figure it out and then it will be done you can try this out from different way if it is giving you right results okay <clears throat> no, I am telling to use user defined, not system defined functions, your own function. Okay, one more from statistics. What is the empirical rule explained with example, no book definition? Tell me what is your understanding of empirical rule in statistics with an example. So this is kind of a writing test, okay? You have to write. I mean, if I'm in front of you, you have to tell me. Now you have to write. So write your understanding of empirical rule. Don't give me any bookish exam, bookish definition, okay? <clears throat> Somebody can start writing and pasting, then we can build on that. Height of students distributed within plus minus three standard deviations. This is one example, yeah, good example. Any other examples of empirical rule?
Empirical duty related with normal distribution were almost 96% data in first quartile, 64 in second quartile. No, I think your understanding of normal distribution is wrong. 96% data in first quartile is a wrong understanding of normal distribution. Do you guys agree with me? This is not what normal distribution is. Or you are confused with quartile understanding or quantile understanding probably. Explains data distribution explains data distribution of normal distribution within plus minus three standard deviation. That's definition, correct? But see, I will tell you what kind of example I'm looking for, okay? So I'm not looking for any bookish definition. So what kind of example I'm looking for is, uh, in, in Tata Consultancy Services TCS, the hikes are having a mean of eight and a standard deviation of two, which means, 64% people are getting hike in the range of 6% to 8%. 96% people are getting in the hike in the range of, let's say 4% to 12% and so on and so forth. So that kind of example, I want you to give me. So any real world example that, that follows that. Yes, yes, 60, 34 plus 34, 68, right? Yeah. Somebody wrote in the comment above 64, so I got confused. the facts which are obtained from tactical uh, experiment yeah height of students so you understood what i'm looking for right see the the, the purpose of this putting this question is um the the way i just said now right i said 64 in in place of 68 that mistake you are correcting that is fine but uh, that kind of explanation or that kind of example I was looking for here. Okay. Fine. Let's go to the next one. Identify the odd one. Do you know what are these keywords? Lloyd, Alcan, Otto, and Euclidean. And what is looking different than the rest that you have to identify? What is looking different from the rest? Auto, are you sure or is that a guess? Everybody is guessing, I think. You can probably see the K-means documentation once. <laughs> Biswajit is saying Euclidean and question mark. So if I were you, I will go to, to SQL learned K means documentation and I will do a control F on Lloyd, L L O Y D. So somebody who does that quickly will be able to tell with confidence what is different here. Euclidean, Euclidean is a distance measuring matrix, okay. 
uh, metric that means you compute the distance between two points using euclidean distance one way of computing distance and option a b and c are different ways of working of k means okay so these are different that's where the answer is d here so why what is the reason of putting this question many a times we don't know some of the important keywords related to some algorithm okay and sklearns documentation is your friend in that case so sklearns documentation is important and crucial okay so when you are going for an interview maybe you just want to you know glance it quickly sklearns documentation yes the others are algorithms or the way k-means up works internally now can you write a simple lambda function last question of the day write a lambda function that takes two numbers and returns the large number so your lambda functions should take two numbers let's say a and b and tell me which is large one liner only lambda obviously not many lines you will write suraj is asking please create video on project explanation suraj on this topic there are at least 10 videos on on unfold data science okay so you have to go to unfold data science and search unfold data science how to explain your project unfold data science how to uh, present your output if you if you search these keywords you will get that yes i want the code for this one liner lambda function which will take two arguments give me the large number a and b it will take tell me a is larger or b is larger if you mail me suraj i will give you the exact links also if you can't find okay that will be useful for you i have created that making uh, keeping in mind many things a is equal to lambda xy max max xy is the syntax correct here xy max of xy you can use max function but i will uh, this question is put not to use max, max function yeah the way funny is doing right funny kiran is doing not to use uh, that i should have written here not to use max, max function but it's okay i mean if you are not if i have not put anyway you have used that's fine lambda xy no rafi your 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 lambda function is taking only one argument i believe lambda x x comma y no your argument should be two in rafi's case i think in Uma's case a b a if a else b yeah, i think this is fine keshav also is writing fine okay so this was all for this session 12 questions from different different topics some from stats some from k-means clustering some from recommendation some from python stats some some of them were easy some of them were little medium level difficult knowingly so that everyone's interest is there if i put more difficult questions what may happen is half of the people may not be able to do and then they may lose interest and you know they they may not go to the next question and they may not be liking the session also so for for to accommodate all the class or all the students together i am trying to put something simpler and something medium level something little complex also right <clears throat> so i hope you like the session guys give me a thumbs up give me a give me a yes if you like the session and you can share with your friends if you want next thursday 10 pm again we will meet okay Shakun Chauhan, hello. Shabikun, yes. Next Thursday, 10 p.m. we will meet. Meanwhile, I have created a video on data science job in India versus UK. People are liking that video. You can watch and get some gyan on 
data science video on uh, data science knowledge, data science career, data science jobs, money in data science in India versus in UK. So you can go to unfold data science and watch that video I released just now. Okay. Thanks all of you for joining Rafi, Yuma, Sandeep. You guys are joining regularly. So I like it very, very much because if some folks also don't join regularly, then I will feel that uh, why to why to do these sessions, right? If if not many people are interested. So you guys are joining regularly. So a big thank you to Rafi, Uma, Sandeep, many people, Rohit, many people are joining. I mean, all these sessions. So thanks to all of you. I will try to create similar kind of content. I will try to keep a mix of some good question and some medium level question, some easy ones also, right? Sure, guys, we will sync up next, next week, same time. Okay. Till then, take care. I will see you all through different videos. Every Thursday, 10 p.m. you can join. Okay. Akash, you can write your queries to me or ping me on LinkedIn, okay? I, I will talk to you. <clears throat> and if you want to watch the previous sessions, you can watch the video is there on the channel. All the videos are with the same name, Data Science Knowledge Check, Session 1, Session 2, Session 3, Session 4. You can ask these guys, Himansu and uh, Rohit and Uma and these people, all the sessions are kind of interesting ones only. So you can watch any of those sessions. Okay. Rafi was also there in all these sessions. So thanks everyone again. I will see you all in the next one. Okay.